Right, hello, this is, we're going to be painting this painting. So this is the view in Hanford, in near Child Oakford. So the first thing to do is to get our darkest dark in because this image is essentially a sort of middling dark strip across the middle with a very light bit at the top and a mid-tony bit at the bottom. So the dark bit is, is like a sandwich between the two. And we have a couple of accents so we have the school itself, which is Hanford, uh, which is, of course, been built in the wrong position for my uh, composition. So uh, it's very, uh, you know, inconsiderate for the world to be not arranged for painting. So I moved the school across. Uh, and the other focus is the distant river. So it's a, a composition with two focuses, which can be quite, uh, quite hard to do. So I, I work, I want to get my, my dark strip in and that will frame the other two parts. So I'm strengthening up the foreground because the, the right hand piece is a little bit bland and boring. So I'll, I'll uh, have a bit of imaginary dark uh, on the right hand side. And I'm just blocking in um, very broadly and I'm not taking that much care. The sky goes in just white because it's very very light compared to the rest so I will do my mixing actually on the board rather than rather than mix on the palette. It's, this is partly meanness because I, I found that this way I use far far less paint when I uh, mix the tones in the sky on the palette. I <laughs> tend to end up with uh, Great big uh, swathes of uh, different uh, different blues, and I find it actually much more intuitive and uh, quicker to uh, to paint to paint into the white on the board. So we're almost blocked in now. The uh, another key bit of light, and I, I shall put in my accent focus last. I said define where they are almost first and then uh, in the tonal blocking I put them in put them in last because the, the important thing is that the, the, these these two areas the distant uh, water and the school kick out of the picture otherwise the arrangement won't work so the the composition is basically you you drift in from from the right hand side and take in the school and then wander off down the river off into the distance that's the aim anyway we shall see well this is all speeded up i don't normally paint this fast by the way this is uh so then once the blocking is done i start refining and i, I try and work over the whole lot Bringing it all forwards bit by bit until it all sits together. And as to when you stop, well, who knows? That every artist wonders that is, to, you know, have I gone too far? Was it better five minutes ago? I, I don't worry my little head about it anymore, to be honest. I, I just stop when I stop. It might be because I need a coffee rather than the pictures finished. So here we go. We're going to we're going to block in our sky and I literally I brush raw colour into the picture and I I, I find this very good because uh, you can you can, depending on how much you brush it in it goes paler so you can make a mark that's too strong but you you put another brush stroke over the top and it immediately drops back so I find you have great control for skies and the mistake I see made again and again are that the uh, the blue is put in absolutely full out of the tube um, and the sky is far too dark in tone compared with the rest and really with landscape and mood and atmosphere tone is king you know you you, you have to get your tones right or that you won't get the mood uh, it'll be uh, it might well be a nice painting uh, 
It doesn't stop it being a nice painting, even slightly. So now I'm starting to get the details in, and I, the detail is always very difficult. For this, it doesn't want to be very defined detail. It just, it just wants to be enough to give a clue. And these lights are very important. They are, they are the uh, stage in front of the house. So I, I'll take quite a lot of care in uh, getting the brights of the grass uh, working working well. Uh, the tone changes you'll see <laughs> on the on the on the, on the uh, video are the sun going in and out. But uh, last time, uh, last video I recorded was completely destroyed by uh, uh, a rain shower, which was so loud that uh, I lost all of the sound. Now I'm starting to put accents in here and there, and they just make sense of um, of the dark areas. You don't need very many of them. Just a couple here and there to tease the eye, and then we. This is this is the the brights going there, and then I I, I need some warms because we're in the winter, and the, the warms are very important. They just they just give uh, a little bit of interest and uh, and mood to the trees. And they also bring that strip of uh, dark. They bring it forwards uh, you know, in front of the distant hills. I do a lot of this. I, 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 I use the, I, I quite like things random. So I, I actually use uh, the little gaps where you can see the ground as, as targets for my dark and light accents so that the gaps have appeared fairly randomly, so that means that the uh, marks are put in are random. So there's the second pass on the sky. I get these cloud tones in, and just to shape the clouds. And you can see from the reference, the clouds are quite detailed, and I, I shall make them much simpler than that, and, and probably not as great a tone range either. So I, I need to have them a little bit softer. I don't want them competing. And I'll do a second pass on the blue. I, I usually do it in this way because I, I want the blue to grade from left to right. Uh, so I do it in a couple of passes. And this is the impasto going on the clouds. The actual physical shape of the paint makes a great deal of difference for highlights. Uh, especially when you see a picture on the wall. Not so much when you see it now. But it, the impasto highlights catch the light, and these are impasto as well. Just to, just to get that bit of bright running across the foreground there. And now we're really getting into the little bits and bobs. And I tend to, I tend to put these in a little bit too strong, and then I. Flick about, and as you see, and I, I, I flick about and blur the ones I don't like, reinforce the ones I do, until nothing draws my eye uh, where I don't want it to, to, to be drawn. So I, I don't want anything really too strong. So there we go, that's the final thing. You missed the last bits because the camera ran out of battery and I was so involved in painting I didn't notice. But here's the final thing and I hope you enjoyed the video and it was uh, a bit informative. Okay, thank you very much.